Katniss is supposed to be olive skin, dark hair, dark straight hair. Um, Hamish is the one that I'm seeing people talk about a lot, um, where Woody Harrelson plays him. So he's blonde hair, blue eyed, but he's not in the books. And um, yeah, so I know you've been talking a lot on your channel about the representation, but I just find it so interesting of a contrast, you know? Yeah, I, I was saying this to a friend today, but I feel like Rick Riordan has completely killed for me, the idea that people in Hollywood try to say of being like, oh, I want my my adaptation or whatever to be more diverse, but it's just Hollywood and the studios and stuff like that just won't let me. And I'm just like a sad little author and I can't do anything. No, you're a liar. You're lying. And I know for sure that you are because I'm sorry. Percy Jackson is on Disney Plus. Disney is one of the most conservative companies generally there is out there like it was a fucking joke that the florida governor decided to go after disney for being too woke <laughs> what are you talking about out of every like disney is too woke are you kidding okay anyway um but like this is not like a a like a forward-thinking company like that like, when i look at rick Riordan, i'm like you actually mean it like clearly and so that means that other authors don't because if they did, they would make it happen. Like, I'm sorry, but if Rick Riordan can make, like, if you didn't watch or know anything about the Percy Jackson show, right? Like, you saw a picture of, like, the cast. You would think that it was, like, a fan cast where they, like, race change all of the characters. Like, there's, there's, like, that happens. And usually that's what fandom has to do. In order to do diversity, we have to write fan fiction where we force the race of the characters to change to other races because it's the only way that we ever get any actual diversity and things like this. Rick Riordan did it in canon. Like he changed the race of basically every character except for Percy. Mm -hmm. And like if he would have found a Percy that was better than Walker, he would have picked that Percy, even if he wasn't, even if it was a person of color. And like, I generally believe that Walker was just the best person that they saw for that part because of how they casted literally everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this sort of a production that not only has a lot of diversity in the cast of the actors, it also has a lot of women. There's and also there a black woman was like the only woman that was credited for one of the episodes. Like there are at, there are writers in the writers room. But it's a different thing to be a to be like a writer that is part of the writers room versus one that is like credited where when you look up the the writers on like Wikipedia they're listed and she and so like she's the only other person besides like the like white dudes that we know of that are like the showrunners also of the show that are accredited in that way for any of the other episodes and there's a woman that was a director for two of the episodes and some most productions don't even have those things and so it's not like it's perfect like the showrunners are still like white men generally but it's just showing that if you want to do that you will and i think because of that the argument can be made that rick riordan didn't put in any diversity or anything like that in the first five books because he was a new author and he wanted to get published and it was just taking things out of his books that would make it harder for him to get published because as soon as he was a known author he like literally shoved in every form of diversity he possibly could like you don't know anything about heroes of olympus but piper is an indigenous person who lives on a reservation she like gets mad at the camp being called camp half-blood because she thinks it's them questioning like her blood quantum and like leo is um is like Latine, who speaks Spanish and speaks Spanish in the book and all that. He's very much, I'm sure, based on people that Rick actually knew since he grew up in Houston, Texas, and he's from Texas. And there's other characters, like Nico comes out as being gay in that book. And and there's other characters like, oh, Frank. Frank is Chinese. <laughs> and so there's a whole story about his Chinese ancestry. Mm -hmm. Hazel is is black and is from New Orleans and so she's like Creole and talks like Creole and talks like that kind of Creole French 
and stuff in the books and and like the books going forward after that are magnus chase where everyone is trans <laughs> Well, and the books after that are Trials of Apollo, and there is no way on earth that Apollo is straight. No, no. He never says, like, I'm bi or I'm pan, but he's definitely one of those things, at least. there. He, like, thinks about how attractive men are constantly <laughs> as, like, the, as, like, he's, like, the point of view for those books. And then, you know, The Sun and the Star is the book about Nico and his boyfriend going on a quest together. And it, that's also the book where Piper comes out as bi or pan or something, and she has a girlfriend after dating a boy. And so, like, all of those things happen all in a row. There is no way that you could possibly get more diverse than all of that happening all in a row. And there's probably things that I'm, like, forgetting that are in, like, other short stories and things like that that I haven't read yet. Because I, for whatever reason, never read the short stories. I don't know why. I just didn't. Um, but when you look at that it's like okay <laughs> like he obviously was like okay now that i'm allowed to let me make this as diverse as humanly possible and force disney hyperion books to publish all of this stuff yes <laughs> i'm going to make you publish a book with a 14 year old gay child i'm absolutely going to make disney plus have a 10 year old child who is gay in season three of the show and everyone is just going to be screaming about how gay he is the entire time. We're going to have so much fun watching tiny little Nico. And it's like, that's how this stuff should be. That's how these things should go. And so when you compare that to the Hunger Games, um, I when I read the Hunger Games, I assumed that Katniss and Gail and... Hamish, since people have mentioned Hamish, I didn't remember what he looked like in the books, but I believe them. I assumed that they were supposed to be indigenous people, like mm -hmm. from the Americas, that sort of like racial or ethnic like look. They definitely are not white, like at all. Like I can vividly remember when they announced the casting of Jennifer Lawrence and Liam Hemsworth, and I was like, what <laughs> like that's not that's not what that's supposed to be at all and so um i have a whole like chip on my shoulder about about hunger games because so many people look at those books as if they are like radical or revolutionary for existing and so the author doesn't need to actually do anything to actually give a fuck about anything else because she wrote these books and so she's obviously going to save the world and I think I th this is like a weird analogy, but I feel like the fandom is almost like becoming aware right now with how they want Hamish to be a person of color, even though that quite literally makes no sense whatsoever. Like you can't have it, what's his face, play a white dude with blonde hair, play him in a trilogy of movies. And then when he's, <laughs> And then when he shows him as a young teenager, he's suddenly a different race. Like, that's just never, that's never going to work. And, but the whole thing that has always frustrated me personally about The Hunger Games, I read those books and I thought the first one was good. I thought the second one was less good. And I thought the third one was literal shit. And if I could have, I would have started it on fire. I, like, I'm not even joking. I read the third book. I, like, downloaded it offline because I was a college student, had no money, and couldn't buy the actual book. But I wanted to know how it ended. As soon as it ended, I deleted it from my, from my computer. I went and found the books that I had bought to buy it and threw them away. And I went into my sister's room, because I lived with her at the time, and told her to never read the books and never watch any of the movies. And we never did. I made my sister watch the first movie with me because she knew that I was reading the books and I liked it. And we didn't think the first movie was that good. Like I'm serious that if Walker plays Hamish, which he should, he would, and he would be great at a role like that. It's literally the only thing that could get me to watch Hunger Game movies again, because otherwise I like, I'm just like, I don't know why these movies exist. They shouldn't be here. This feels like a joke that there's like Hunger Games merchandise when the Hunger Games is calling out people making merchandise about itself, like what is going on? But mm -hmm. so like when you see, like it's too late for Hamish to be a person of color. If that actor was cast in that role, they would be slaughtered 
like the amount of harassment that person would get would be off the charts. It would be even worse than it normally would be because it generally does not make any sense for mm -hmm. it to, for him to be a person of color when he's older and then magically turn into a white person when he's, that, no, that would be horrible. Like you can understand that these movies should be, have people of color in charge, but also none of you cared about that until now. And I think that it's fascinating almost that people are almost realizing like i don't think these stories as are as woke as we want them to be because the thing with hunger games that always kills me is the character of gail mm -hmm. is the one that people usually hate i like him i never talk about that because people like every video about hunger games you see people talk about how much they hate him gail is the revolutionary sort of character like the rev wanting a revolution character that is like we need to do more violent acts to take the fight to the capital mm -hmm. Peta is the literal soft bitch that is like no we can't fight we need to like make bread and talk about how much we love each other and that's the way that we're going to win against the capital like he is like the peace making one and throughout those books you are like Gail is very much presented as a toxic, manipulative jerk because they treat him like because he is angry and because he wants to take that anger out on the Capitol, like do things that you have to do when you're being oppressed that way. He is seen as like the bad person and the villain. Like everyone in the in the Hunger Games fandom essentially hate Gail. And I'm like, he is the he is he is that person. Like he is who you want everyone to be. He, he is the people that are like protesting. He is Palestinians trying to fight against being slaughtered by Israel. Like you guys are usually on the side of this person, but this book series made you hate him. There is a problem with that. Like when I read these books, I was just like, I can't take any of this shit seriously because you're demonizing the one character that is right. I don't like, even though he does things in those books that are, I'm sure, like, not that great, I, I'm i like, his characterization is so flawed because she wants so badly to do this message. Like, she's literally doing the, I'm going to post a meme with Martin Luther King Jr. quotes. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not know until the new book was announced that the author had not said anything at all about Palestine. I was like, how do you write The Hunger Games? and you say nothing about Palestine, like, I feel like you should explode from like, just the most ironic thing that's ever happened to me. And it's not even happening to me, it's happening to you. And so I was legitimately shocked and it still shocks me that that is somehow true, that she hasn't said anything and that people are trying to gaslight themselves into believing that this book is going to make some big statement about it. And it's just like, I don't know why you would have somebody as a favorite author that would let you wonder for this long what you what she thinks about genocide for eight months and is making you read a book to find out like that is if rick riordan did that i would drive to boston to slap him like he he would never do that because he wrote a blog about it 10 days after everything happened and so he did he doesn't do that he very much put himself out there and put himself open to critiques on for pro-Palestinian and pro-Israel, like there are critiques on both sides when it comes to what he said, but he still put himself out there and said something when he absolutely did not have to. And I'm sure Disney was very mad at him that he did that. Yeah. Like, especially in October, there's no way that they were like, yes, Rick Riordan, two months before your show starts, absolutely get on the internet and call Pal and say that Palestinians are being genocided by Israel and that it's wrong what's happening to them and that they deserve to have a state and they deserve to get funding to make themselves a viable state. That's absolutely what they wanted him to do. He did it anyway, because he cares about what his fans actually think of him. Rick Riordan in the past did things in some of his prior books that were like Arab sort of stereotypes. But the fact is that he like responds to when he makes mistakes. He did that took himself off of social media because he didn't want to hurt his his like audience anymore 
and he started his imprint. That's why he started his imprint because he realized like, I'm fucking this up. I'm not the one who should be doing, doing this and telling these stories. So I'm going to give people from these cultures a platform so they can do it because they should be the ones actually doing it. It shouldn't be me. Mm -hmm. Like that is the best way to handle when you realize what you're doing is to cut off you harming your fans further and platforming the people who deserve it. And so like he made mistakes, but he has actually tried to change and has actually taken steps instead of just being like, I'm sorry. He's actually did things, actionable things to fix what he did wrong. And Mm -hmm. so Suzanne Collins doesn't do that. She takes the story of Palestinians basically and makes them fictional people and puts them into a fictional world as if like you need to do that to get people to give a shit about them. And so it's, I don't even know what to say about this stuff. Like I turned off the comments on the video I made because people kept being like, she wrote these books so she doesn't have to say anything. And it's like, why? Like I thought that three weeks ago, everyone was like cancel celebrities. But this girl, this woman in freaking Connecticut writes a, like, the whitest bitch ever, like, a rich woman who lives in Connecticut and, like, whitewashed her own book series on purpose. Like, absolutely let them do that. Like, she could have easily stopped them, clearly, because Rick Riordan stopped. If they tried to do any of that, he would be like, no, absolutely not. And so, clearly, she could have tried to make things different. She didn't. And so she let them do that to the to these movies. And so she clearly doesn't care. And like, I don't know why people, I just, I don't get it. I don't know why people are willing to, like her books aren't even that good. Like, I don't know why people like them so much. It's very hard to, for me to understand. It's hard for me to understand a public figure at all that would leave their fan base wondering how they feel about a genocide like this, especially when you wrote a book series that is basically about the Palestinian story. Um, District 12 is pretty much Palestine, like it's indigenous people mixed in with people that have colonized them a little bit like PETA's family. Um, But they're like very much in like out there just taking care of themselves. They don't have any money. They don't have any support. They have to go and like, you know, hunt to find food to feed themselves because they don't have anyone else from anything. People in Palestine right now are literally being starved to death because the only food they get is from Israel and Israel won't give them anything. The capital won't give them enough food to survive on. And so they have to go and kill wild animals to survive on. It's very blatant. Mm -hmm. So an author like this, especially not saying anything about this and just kind of hand waving it, it just feels weird. Like, They keep bringing up the thing she says of like, oh, I don't write Hunger Games books unless I have something to say, as if it's like a big statement. And I'm like, do you know that's every author? Mm -hmm. It's, it just makes me sad to think that, like there's so many Palestinians that are on TikTok right now begging for money. And it like legitimately hurts my soul every single day seeing all of them because I can't give them any money because I don't have any money. And I I really wish that I had money that I could give them because I would give them everything if I had any at all. And that's bad enough already. Um, and it makes me sad to think that somebody like that, one of those families could run into a, a video of somebody making a video trying to justify Suzanne Collins not saying anything about them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I guess the thing too about the blog that Rick Riordan wrote about Palestine, um, he talks about in that blog that children in Palestine and children in Israel wrote him like fan mail. Mm -hmm. And they said that his books made them feel understood. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense why they would, because this is a book series about child soldiers. Who are in the middle of wars these children are literally in the middle of wars even like as israeli children definitely are a lot safer than palestinian children but they still live in an environment where they are told constantly that they are in danger by a bad evil force that is trying to kill them even if that is not true they are told that 
and that affects them and how they feel how safe they actually are. And so if Rick Riordan, who is a child-based author, got letters like that from people in Palestine and people in Israel, there is no way that Palestinian children did not write similar things to Suzanne Collins. And they deserve to hear something from her. There's no way that a Palestinian child did not read The Hunger Games and feel like this book is about me. And so it makes me feel horrible that people are openly advocating for this author to not have to give them an answer. Like if he had those sort of kids contacting him, she definitely did. Her, her books and movies are have sold more from Percy Jackson because they're seen as for adults. So people are more likely to read them. And it just, they deserve an answer. There is no reason why a Palestinian or Israeli child or even children from the other countries in the Middle East that also have similar stories as the Hunger Games deserve to be ignored by the author. Like, don't you want to know that the people who wrote things that mean a lot to you care about you? Like when, when Rick Riordan wrote that blog about Palestine, he was in the middle of doing a press tour for Chalice of the Gods. That book came out like a week after he wrote that. The, the blog that he wrote was actually supposed to be him talking about the like press tour and meeting people and how that's been and what it's been like and blah, blah, blah. Like there is parts of that blog that is about that after the Palestine part section is done. But he, before he did that, he was like, before I say anything about my book tour, I need to talk about the ongoing violence in Israel and Palestine. Mm -hmm. Because he was like, I can't justify myself writing something like this, promoting myself without acknowledging what's going on in the world. And so it's like if he could do that and he hasn't been on social media in 10 years, he can find a way to do it when he when literally nobody <laughs> was asking him at the time what he thought about it, then you can too. Mm -hmm. And it's it's I just don't know why people are letting her get away with something like that. Um, like, what does that matter if she's not willing to stand with those beliefs that she put into her novels?